Hello everyone. Uh, good evening. Namaste from India. So today's topic is ease the pain of platform engineers with Argo CD by leveraging customized templates. Uh, who am I? I'm Pratik Singh. I'm a senior software developer at NASDAQ. Uh, my username would be kitab29 across the web. I work in DevOps, my expertise with uh, Golang and Python. Without any further delay, let's get into the agenda for today. Today we'll be understanding the problem around this. We'll be understanding what customize is and how to use that. How to use customize with Argo CD. I'll be sharing the resources related to all of this at the end of the slide and we'll have some Q&As at the end. So let's start. Uh, the problem that exists as of now, right? Uh, I'm a, so we work in the platforms team. We are the platform engineers. We have seen that almost two or three microservices are coming in each release cycle. Uh, you know, it's said that uh, microservices are like bunny. You leave them for two minutes and you have 14 suddenly, right? So uh, that's a problem at least for developers, uh, not for developers, but for DevOps engineers because it's easier for them with the help of all these fancy tools that have come up to write down code easily. But for us, we still have to write those deployment files. Either you have to help, uh, write those Helm charts. That deployment process is not as straightforward. Especially, there is a lot of grunt work in the starting. Uh, if uh, your company is using any kind of uh, YAML file as of now, I'm pretty sure they have extended the number of lines to be 100 or 200, files of, uh, 200 lines in a YAML file. That's too long. Those are error prone and setting up new projects takes a lot of time. Or you might have seen that the uh, same microservice that is working for you in the dev namespace or the UT namespace is not working for pre-prod. So these all things take a lot of time as the DevOps engineer. And it's, to be honest, it's a lot of grunt work that is not that much required. That is the problem statement that uh, we were facing at NASDAQ. And uh, uh, in fact, this was a thing that I talked to a lot of developers uh, around me and they were facing this problem. So getting into the solution, uh, how many of you know about customize over here? Anyone? Oh, that's, that's really great to see. For those who don't know about customize, let me introduce you a little bit and then we'll see how helpful and why this is a topic today. So customize is a CNCF project. If you don't know, it is supported by Kubernetes and Argo CD both. Why it is so popular is because whatever you do with the help of customize, it is a templating, uh, it's a template, right? So you are not effectively ending up making copies of the same file. I'll show you how. So uh, you might have seen a simple YAML file like this, right? Uh, everyone who has a deployment in the Kubernetes cluster right now, you might have seen it's an API version, then there's a kind of it, then the metadata, the labels, and then the yada, 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 the specs, right? So suppose I have deployed this on my cluster. Now I realize that, hey, there was a label missing, right? I put, I want to put down a label in this deployment. Usually what we have done is that we uh, work with the YAML file again, you make a changes to it, but I will show you an easier way to do this. So what you need is you write a customization file. As I was mentioning, it is uh, uh, supported by uh, Kubernetes, so there is a kind. What you do is you aim, if you see in the one, two, three, the fourth line, right? You're mentioning the resource that you want to tamper with. So the last picture you saw, that was a welcome.yaml file. We want to temper or use that same file for the new year YAML, right? So we mentioned that over here. This um, patch is JSON 6902 that you see. That is an RFC, I will not get into that right now because that would exceed the scope of this talk. Uh, but I will give you the documentation for it if anyone wants to read. How this works is that you tell that what you have to do in the, uh, the YAML that you have referenced. So I want to add a new label, right? We mentioned the path of it, that hey, we want to uh, use uh, add a new label known as test key as you can see in the label section inside metadata. The value for it would be say test value, right? Then because YAML files can be everything, you can, a, a deployment file can have, you know, ingress, secrets, what on, uh, whatnot. So you also mentioned the target for this in the customization file. You tell the groups, the kind, the name, and the version of it. After this, it's a very easy process. You just write a simple command that is known as customize build. 
what this build command will do is it will not uh, make a new file for you. It will just generate a new YAML file with the things that you have said, right? So it will be outputted in the terminal. I'll show you in the demo how it works. It will be outputted in the terminal and then you can use that as a YAML file anywhere you want. Now, uh, some of you might have this question that, hey Pratik, for a very small change such as, you know, putting down a label, you are introducing a new YAML file, right? This can be a very co common question. I'm true and I agree with you that uh, for a very small change, it's useless to have this file. But now imagine that you are setting up a new microservice in your company. You have got a couple of deployments file for other services and you want to replicate that for this, uh, this service. But as a platform engineer, you know, there will be different ingress, there will be different routes for it. There will be different secrets, there will be different configs. But rest, a lot of things will be common, right? So this is where this customize uh, helps us because it will write all of those data in an easier way. But again, there's a question, right? That what about the smaller changes? So once you have done this build, right? The newer file looks like something like this. Uh, you see there is a new label added and now this YAML file you can use anywhere in the way you want. As I was mentioning for the smaller changes. So suppose we all have been there that there is a new tag of the, uh, you know, deployment that comes up. The developer says that, hey, I've pushed this to the, you know, it has passed to the CI CD pipeline. Now this is the new tag and we want to use that. What you can use is you can use the customize edit command to just introduce a new tag. <laughs> Once you use that command and do the customize build, you will be given a new YAML file, which looks something like this. So you see at the bottom, at the very bottom of the text, you see the new tag, which mentions whichever tag you have mentioned. I want to show you the demo that would make this all process very clear. Oh, sorry. Is this visible? Sorry. Okay. It will be a little bit difficult for me to see this way, but let's see. Okay. okay, so can you see there, there are two files. I'll see the first file that is cat.welcome. So this is a very typical deployment file that you see anywhere. It will have kind, specs and all of that, right? I'll show you the customization file, how it looks. So the customization file, as I was uh, mentioning you, it looks something like this, right? Now I have two ways to go about it. What I can do is I can go to customize, right? And towards the very end, suppose I want a, I just want to name the namespace to something else. I wanted to keep it as suppose pretty, right? Now what I do is just save it. Uh, yes. Okay. So if you see, so this is the new YAML file. I see the namespace has been changed to pretty and all I have to do is uh, if I'm, wait a second, let's not. Okay, so this is the build command. As soon as I hit build, you see there's a new YAML file uploaded, right, on the terminal. But if you see the directory, there's no new YAML file that has come up. So it does not automatically creates a YAML file for you. That's the whole point I wanted to show you. How you can use it is that you can make something like Pratik dot yaml right oh sorry it's a spelling mistake over there yeah okay do we have it uh, can you see that pratik dot yaml has been built so it can be dev dot yaml it can be uat dot yaml it can be pre prod dot yaml it's all up to you right whatever changes you have to do you can just change it to the customization file as i showed to you whatever changes you want or a template you want you can use that and keep it and as I was mentioning, the edit file. So let me see. Okay, so let's change the namespace from dev to Pratik we have done. Let's change it to preprod, right? So this one command, I did not have to do nano. I did not have to do anything. And again, I will do the customize build, right? And I will do it preprod.yml. Sorry? Uh, it's fine, I think. <laughs> Just for the demo purpose. Uh, the, what's it? Okay. Okay. That I don't think that would be a problem. I'm not going to show it on a cluster. 
So it's just just for the understanding purpose. So I think we'll have a new YAML that would be. Can you see that prepro.yaml? Right. So as I showed you, there are two ways that you can use the customize edit. You can use the customize uh, a build option, whichever you want to do. So with the help of this, if you are using Argo CD, uh, right? So what you have to do is next is just add this, whatever the files are, right? And then you have to do the common things that you do, the git status, git commit, git push, and you'll have the deployment done on pre-prod, UAT, whatever, right? So setting up a new microservice with this way would be much simpler and much standardized and much faster in my opinion. Coming back to the slides, uh, as I was mentioning, uh, this will follow a template. So what will uh, what I mean by a template is this is a streamlined process now. What uh, what the streamline helps is they, even if there is a new uh, you know DevOps engineer joining in. So I am a fresher. I joined my company eight or nine months back. So it was very overwhelming for me to see that YAML file. You know there are so many things in that YAML file. But if you have a template, it becomes a little easier for the new guy or the new person who has joined your team. Right? They know how to do it. Even if uh, your manager wants to do it, fine, they can do it. You can have the output saved in any format. Uh, one more thing, I, if I can show it to you, I will not deploy it. But uh, what you can do is, basically the build command that you run, right? Uh, I don't recommend this at all. <laughs> but what you can do is that you can have it some way like this. So what it does is that if it is connected to a Kubernetes, so, Scroll it down a little bit. Can I? Okay, can I can't. So what it will do is it will uh, create the YAML file and it will directly apply to the Kubernetes cluster. I really don't recommend you to do it, but yeah, that's also an option. Uh, you have all the changes committed. You avoid a lot of grunt uh, work. You don't have any silly mistakes. You don't have those indentation, that annoying indentation errors that you face, because all of that is taken care by Customize, which is built on a GoLang templating service, so that takes care of it. Uh, you'll avoid having multiple copies because everything is based on one thing and you just have the customization file. And I think that's all about it. I'll have, I have the resources embedded in this slide that is for the customized website, how to install customize. Uh, the third point that you see, the main article, it is all about uh, what we have discussed today and it will have even deeper implementations if you want to go ahead. As I was mentioning, the patches JSON 6902 RFC link is also there if anyone is interested. Uh, that brings us to questions. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, why customize and not DevOps? Yeah, so it's really up to your uh, uh, preference. Uh, to be honest, uh, I have used Helm a lot in my previous companies and uh, I quite liked it. But there are some problems that comes with Helm. I'll just give you an example. So uh, we had a uh, variable, environment variable or secret, I'm forgetting a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we had that on the Helm chart. We pushed the update and we deleted. So uh, maybe it was our mistake. Uh, so we just deleted the deployment of uh, the Kubernetes cluster. The Helm chart did not get updated. The deployment came up and the environment variable did not reflect. So what we had to do, we had to particularly go and delete the Helm chart from the, uh, what to say, the cluster and then it gets pulls and then it gets deployed. So maybe that uh, you have to particularly go and do Helm upgrade each time. Yeah. yeah so it's it's a personal call, uh, to be honest. You can do it this way. You can do it with Helm. Uh, a lot of companies are doing it with Helm. So. Uh, any other questions? I think then we come to the end of it. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm Pratik Singh. If anyone wants to connect and talk to me, you can scan this QR code. Thanks so much.